one. You saw him earlier. So nice. We're showing him twice. Mark Jennings <laughs> back with uh, part two of our interview this morning right. with regard because we were talking about we were showing pictures of that uh, that uh, the, the Four Season Garden. Correct. Outside your house. And one of the things you talked about was window boxes and how you can make use of them, not just in the warmer months. That's right, because we all pay attention to them during the summer and we put our annuals in here. But this is just an alternative, and that is to go ahead and put something that's an evergreen in your window box. Then you complement it. Here I have some kale. And what I've also done is this is a great time to trim your trees. Oh, yeah. So even something as resourceful as some branches are also wonderful to kind of create that wonderful illusion of a different time of the season. I thought that was just a stick. Now I realize it's more no, than a stick. No, I went trimming my trees and then I took some great pieces and I went ahead and popped it right into my window box. Right now, we're probably seeing a lot of mums right now. And yes. This is very beautiful and it's a big impact and yes, it's very full. But what happens after that? So how about if we take this and then we start incorporating different resources that we have in the garden. Anything that is green and has texture, you start backfilling and filling it in and you just pop it right into the soil. Yeah. And what happens is that you really get this very dense, lush um, winter interest, as I like to call it. And I've heard the term or the phrase hardy mums, I think I have, haven't I? Hardy. So, is that, have I? Am I yes, a hardy that? mum will basically tolerate the temperature as it gets cold. Okay, so you won't okay. lose your flower. Good. But what okay. happens after the flowers are spent, that it's not very interesting or very attractive. So what I like to do is just using the same base, just go ahead and forage in the garden and backfill and just completely fill it with lots of texture and color. And who and doesn't then, have some of this stuff in their yard? That's right. Or Evergreen. your neighbor's yard. Just <laughs> swipe it from there, right? <laughs> well, you know, if your neighbor's looking to trim their bushes, this is a good time to offer that service. Or if they're just looking the other way. And, <laughs> and something... Love thy neighbor, come on. <laughs> All right, so here's something that's very beautiful. Here's the grasses and here's the cattails. And once again, this is also very whimsical and a wonderful touch. Whether you pop it into the soil or look, I can come right in here and I could simply just lay it across the side. And here's some hemlock and you watch how quickly you totally can transform the look of this by just adding more texture really transforms it right to a different season, is and there that's winter. You need, is there anything you need to do to sort of uh fasten this stuff down so it won't just get blown away well, or what, taken by your neighbor? What you want to do, I'm doing it very quickly, is if you could go ahead and put any of the stems right into the soil, that'll guarantee it doesn't move around, especially when it comes to your planters. Yeah. I find that the window boxes, if you kind of just lay it down and intertwine it and then periodically go ahead and pop something in, that will kind of really secure it and it completely changes the illusion. So the point here is that when you're creating a four season garden, make sure that you buy things for your garden that becomes a great resource for design. And the best way to do that is go to your local nurseries right now and see what's at the nursery. Right now you'll see a lot of different color and texture. That's when you buy. You buy those things that are blooming for the fall that give you great inspiration and texture and even something as simple as ivy, <laughs> I can crown you as a king, you know, can become a great resource. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a royal something or another anyway. So you can repurpose just about anything from your garden but something certainly you can ask your uh, the, the person at the local nursery what do you or they can get that information from your book too life on mars right my book life on mars a four season garden you can go to your local bookstore you can go to amazon.com we have a copy of it somewhere and it's kicking right around. here can you show that? it yeah, really a has cover. a lot of great resources and once again i've re uh, designed the garden so it really has beautiful things to look at and it's attainable and resourceful in these times, we really want to be able to provide a lot of great information. But not only that, is that it's one thing to be able to say how to do it. It's another thing to be able to walk away and start saying, I can do that. And yeah. the best part is that at the end of every season, there is a signature cocktail that represents my garden, Roseburg Gardens, and there's a great, delicious recipe. One thing I've noticed in the many times we've met is that the things you talk about, you, you truly can't anybody really truly can do I really thrive on living and breathing my brand it's yeah. one thing to come out here and to talk about things but it's another thing to really have it become a part of 
being very organic and it comes and it resonates. Things that I discover and things that I do in my garden and whether it be on my website mm -hmm. is because I've had that hands-on approach. <laughs> it's hard to look at you with that. Yeah. Hey, it's um, your fault, buddy. But uh, I've really done it myself, so I'm able to deconstruct and share it with people that you can do this. And it should be fun, and it should be something that you should be able to enjoy. Well, it's hard to take myself seriously <laughs> when I see this when I see this foliage on my head. But you know, hell, Mar Jennings, <laughs> yes. I'm king. Uh, you're a king now. There yeah, you go. I should. I, I feel like I should be wearing a toga. <laughs> but it's a perfect example. There's some ivy, and whether you make a large um, wreath or you do something fun like that, I mean, it's just ivy, but it has another purpose. It sure does. Yes. Rethink, reuse, and, this, and redesign. And this ain't it. But you know what? <laughs> there are all, all these ideas. Halloween's coming anyway. That's right. Yeah, hey, uh, WTNH.com. That is the website if you want more information.